Season 11 of The Curse of Oak Island has taken us on a thrilling journey into the heart of the island's mysteries. As the Lagina brothers and their team dig deeper into the money pit and the garden shaft, they uncover artifacts and clues that have never been seen before and have the power to rewrite history in the island's history and bring them closer to the legendary treasure. But just as they seem to be on the verge of a breakthrough, a frustrating mishap throws a pull into their search. The Lagina brothers rise to the challenges with their team, hoping to preserve their quest. Will they finally reach their goal, or is the treasure just out of reach? The Curse of Oak Island, Season 11, Episode 10. It is a new day on Oak Island, and problems welcome brothers Rick, Marty Lagina, and Craig Tester as they get to the Money Pit area. The drilling team has encountered a setback while deepening the garden shaft in the money pit. The timeline has shifted, the weather is causing issues, and the voids behind the shaft are complicating matters. Rick expresses worry about the delay, as completing the deepening was a major goal for the year. They now need to figure out the source of the water inflow. Duma Contracting Limited has been trying to stop the mysterious water flow into the 87-foot deep structure for three weeks. It could be related to the legendary flood traps in the Money Pit. This delay prevents the team from reaching the final depth of 95 feet, where they hope to access a wooden tunnel leading to the Baby Blob, an area with high traces of gold, silver, and other metals. Rick, Marty, Craig, and their team need help reaching the valuable treasures buried in the Money Pit area. In a War Room meeting, they express disappointment over the delay in completing the Garden Shaft, they discuss efforts to stop water from entering the shaft and focus on making it sustainable. The plan is to extend the shaft to 95 feet to understand the deposit's nature. Concerns arise about drilling without water issues, so Manova will use geofoam to stabilize the shaft and fill voids, taking another week. If Duma Contracting extends the garden shaft safely, they can use a probe drill to locate precious metals. The team stresses the importance of using the garden shaft for horizontal drilling to find the treasure. They commit to solving challenges together. Marty notes agreement with the partners, but the possibility of cofferdam work is discussed, along with pumping the Aladdin's cave if metals are found. The meeting ends with a shared understanding of the challenges and a commitment to finding a solution. Gold in Aladdin's cave. The Oak Island team is exploring a spot about 60 feet southwest of the Garden Shaft and Baby Blob in the Money Pit area. This spot, called Aladdin's Cave by Marty, is a large cavern about 1550 feet deep. Evidence of wooden structures and gold detected through water samples has sparked their interest. The team finds intriguing things at the cavern's end and sonar and underwater images suggest it could be a man-made chamber. Like before, they consider digging a large steel coffer dam to uncover any hidden treasures in Aladdin's cave. Marty strongly supports investigating Aladdin's cave, emphasizing his belief in its significance. The team agrees they need a better image of the cave, so Rick suggests drilling another hole and possibly putting a camera down. Everyone on the team thinks looking into Aladdin's cave is a great idea, despite recognizing the amount of work involved. They decide to explore further, expressing unanimous agreement with the plan. More evidence of the dam built in the swamp area. Later that afternoon, Bill is asked to pull back a little in the southeast corner of the swamp. Rick, along with his nephew Alex, Gary Drayton, and Billy Gart, continue searching for important clues near the potentially 500-year-old Stone Road. Gary has been busy since uncovering this massive feature in 2020, finding critical clues like ancient wooden barrels and a stone pathway that suggest it was used to unload valuable cargo onto Oak Island. The team hopes to find more of the stone road and valuable clues to solve the 229-year-old mystery. As they explore, they come across more chains, and Gary notes that they are connected and old. He observes that they are not factory-made but crude, they speculate about the larger chain possibly being an anchor and the smaller ones serving different purposes. The team believes these chains are significant for loading and unloading cargo. Gary is excited about the find and mentions that it reminds him of a multi-point, emphasizing the discovery's significance. 
They continue exploring for more clues. While excavating near Stone Road, Gary, Alex, and Billy discover an iron object, possibly the top of a spike. Gary identifies it as an old rosehead spike, suggesting it's from the 1700s or older. The team considers the possibility of it being a ship spike or a part of a buried structure. The discovery sparks thoughts of Fred Nolan's reports about a dam feature in the same area, possibly used to create the swamp artificially. The team is eager to explore further and uncover more evidence that may contribute to solving the mystery. The scene concludes with the team being ready for more excavations in the swamp and the money pit area. Artifacts from Lot 5. Rick has joined his brother Marty, Jack Begley, archaeologist Liam Nevin, and archaeometallurgist Emma Colligan in the Interpretive Center. If this structure is as big as they think, it's a major discovery. It's a large building and they're discovering more objects. Emma and Lar have done scientific tests on an iron object and a carved stone found a week ago in the large foundation recently found beneath the circular stone depression on Lot 5 on the island's western side. Jamie described the carved stone as a whetstone used for sharpening tools, a technique used for a long time. Emma used special tools like X-ray and CT scanners to study the artifacts. The X-ray test showed the iron content, confirming it's a tool for sharpening. They also talked about another decorated piece of iron, maybe a crochet hook that Jamie thought was ornamenting a box. Research connected these artifacts to Sir William Phipps, an English politician from the 17th century. The team has found metal objects on Lot 5 linked to Sir William Phipps, whom some believe buried treasure in the money pit in 1687. The research shows a match between the metal objects on Lot 5 and items from Phipps' home in Maine. The team thinks this connection could explain the evidence of valuable metals in the Baby Blob, or Aladdin's Cave. They're trying to understand the importance of these findings and think they might help solve the mystery. Collapse in Aladdin's Cave. The next morning, there were only 15 feet left to go, and the team was excited to drill B-hole KL5 in the Money Pit area. They aimed to breach a mysterious cavern called Aladdin's Cave, about 150 feet below ground. Alex, Leah, and the team noticed something unusual in the underground features during the drilling. As they reached a depth of 148 feet, they observed a distinct separation between fine and coarse materials, indicating they should have entered the open cavern. However, there needs to be a solution. Mike, another team member, shares that they hit the cavern at 147 feet, and the material being pulled into the casing is sandy and full of slush. There's concern about a potential collapse from above. Mike calls Rick to explain the situation and discuss their next steps. On a video call, Rick Lena gathered the team in the war room, including Marty Lagina and Craig Tester. They drilled down to about 146 feet and found some extra material, raising concerns about a collapse. Rick emphasizes the importance of Aladdin's cave, where they suspect treasure might be based on high concentrations of precious metals and organic material in the water. Marty suggests not giving up on Aladdin's cave, considering it might not be a total collapse, but perhaps a wall gave way. He suggests analyzing all the data from the camera and sonar for a clear understanding before deciding how to proceed. Craig agrees with Rick, urging Paul and Steve to examine all the data. Understanding the cave's current state, whether a collapse or partial collapse, is crucial for planning the next steps. They emphasize the need to gather all the information about the cave. Beat in Lot 5. Later in the day, Jack Begley joined archaeologist Liam Nevin and the team to explore a mysterious foundation on Lot 5. They aim to uncover clues about why it was built and if anything is valuable. A team member suggests that they keep digging to see what it is. Jack, Fiona, MOA, and Lindy clear away soil and debris to reveal more of the structure, while Jamie and Helen sift through the collected material for artifacts and clues. Shortly, they found a ceramic piece with no glaze or maybe white salt glaze from the mid-1700s, possibly connected to William Phipps. Then, the team also discovered an angle perpendicular to the possible wall, suggesting an entrance to a cellar or a staircase to another buried level. 
Archaeologist Jamie Kuba makes a significant find, a beautifully decorated bead, possibly made of Venetian glass. The team discusses its potential age and how it might affect the perceived age of the stone structure, investigating evidences of dam structure in the swamp. In the afternoon, the Oak Island team decides to check out a promising area in the southeast corner of the swamp. Jack Begley and metal detection experts Gary Drayton and Billy Gart are looking for clues and evidence of buried structures near the Big Stone Road. Gary scans the area, saying, I think it's a bit of a scrappy signal, but let's see what we've got going out here. They find what seems to be an ancient iron fastener and wonder if it could be connected to the Stone Road or the buried dam feature mentioned by Fred Nolan. The next morning, Rick, Craig, and the team met with blacksmithing expert Carmen Legg in the Interpretive Center. Carmen checks out several artifacts recovered in the swamp near the Stone Road. They talk about a fastener inside wood, thinking it might have been used for hanging lanterns. They also discuss a big piece of iron, identified as a set possibly used for driving pins in ship construction. Carmen thinks it could be from the late 1600s to the late 1700s. Another interesting find is a large hook with a straight shaft, possibly dating back to the 1500s. Craig shows a central link with three chains to Carmen, who notes its age based on design and weight. The chains are machine-made, suggesting changes over time. Carmen explains that such setups were used to lift or drag cargo. The team wonders if the hook and chain were used to move valuable cargo onto Stone Road long ago. Carmen believes the artifacts at the swamp's edge may be related to ship activities, indicating an old pier. The team hopes to find more structures linked to the original work, connecting the dots in their investigation. They thank Carmen for his insights, and the mystery on Oak Island deepens. Images of Inside of the Aladdin Cave Later that afternoon, Rick, Marty, and Craig gather the team in the war room to discuss the fabled Aladdin's cave in the Money Pit area. They've done a deep dive into the mysterious cavern, about 150 feet deep, and are eager to share their findings. The team, including Paul Troutman, Surveyor Steve, and geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner, conducted sonar and video scans of the cave anomaly. They tagged into it from different boreholes, suspecting a potential collapse, the visual and water sampling data collected inside the feature were further processed. The enhanced video files, refined by ProHawk Technology Group, reveal intriguing details. The team notices a bolt and a flat area around it, suggesting possible human-made features. They observe right angles and a potential opening heading westward. The sonar images confirm a possible entrance and showcase the cavity's dimensions. The team discusses the significance of the right angles and their potential connection to man-made structures. Dr. Ian Spooner notes that the cavity collects gold and silver values and wood, suggesting a connection to a structure. In the last video, they explore the southern edge of the cave, observing a collapsed floor and debris. Despite the challenges, the team desires to put a casing into the cave to examine the material and potentially make more discoveries. Wood in the Garden Shaft. Rick and Marty Lagina, along with their partner Craig Tester, are in a meeting with their team at the Research Center. The Garden Shaft project is on hold, offering a unique opportunity to conduct more drilling in the money pit. However, there are permitting issues for the reconstruction of the Garden Shaft. Despite this setback, the team collected wood samples from the area dating back to the early 18th century and conducted water tests that showed high traces of gold. While waiting for permission to proceed with the project, the team must decide how to continue their search for the Money Pit Treasure Vault and unravel the 228-year-old mystery. A recent discovery is a five-ton high wood crib tunnel found at multiple drilling locations at a depth of 103 feet. This structure, carbon dated to the 17th century, may run toward the garden shaft raising the possibility of finding something significant at the end of the tunnel. The team is debating whether to continue investigating this tunnel or move to another location, D7.5, offset from the garden shaft, where a 70-ton tunnel was found recently. 
The team dug a new tunnel away from the original money pit in the borehole D-17 treasure chamber. This new tunnel is at an unusual depth, possibly indicating an opposite chamber. Its proximity to the garden shaft makes it an ideal location for investigation. The team plans to clear and reconstruct a waterproof shaft down to at least 80 feet deep with permission from Duma's Contracting Limited. The discovery of wood in D7 is significant, suggesting original work not encountered before. The team is excited about uncovering new findings. They are specifically searching for a 70-foot and a 100-foot tunnel. Discussions revolve around whether to explore a tunnel towards the garden shaft at D17 and the possibility of it leading to an offset chamber. The focus is on obtaining gold data and understanding the tunnel's orientation. The decision is made to move down to D7.5 for further exploration, emphasizing the importance of letting the data and science guide their actions. Oak Island Season 11 has been nothing short of a thrillingly adventurous season. Right from the first episode of the season, the Lagina brothers and their team have kept viewers glued with the exploration of the Money Pit, Lot 5 located on the island's west side. And not long after the exploration starts, treasures begin to reveal themselves. What were some of the most exciting moments of the season? Tunnel through Borehole DN 11.5 to the Garden Shaft. In the Money Pit area, a drilling operation is underway at Borehole DN 11.5. Charles Barkhouse and geologist Terry Matt are actively monitoring the drilling progress. The drilling has reached a crucial phase as it is approaching the suspected treasure zone, situated between 78 and 88 feet deep. Terry reports they are at DN 11.5, specifically at a depth of 78 to 88 feet. The conversation reflects the anticipation and significance of the moment. Charles notices a breakthrough at this point, prompting him to express excitement. He suggests pulling up the drill to assess the situation further. Terry agrees and mentions measuring the pipe to gather more information about the breakthrough. The dialogue indicates a sense of urgency and curiosity about the unexpected development. Terry provides an update, stating that they have encountered an open space approximately 90 feet below grade. He uses the term void to describe this space, suggesting a potential cavity or empty area in the ground. The team acknowledges the significance of this discovery and decides to pause the operation. The conversation shifts to a decision-making process with the team discussing how to proceed in light of the newfound void. There is a mention of involving Rick and Marty in the decision-making process, highlighting the importance of seeking their input. A call is made to Rick to inform him about the development. The excitement in the tone suggests that finding an open space in the so-called treasure zone is a noteworthy event. The treasure zone is characterized by high gold values, trapped air, and known voids, adding to the anticipation of potential discoveries. The team is excited about finding something important. At around 90 feet deep, they felt the rods break through something, which seemed open beyond that. They think they might be at the top of a tunnel because they found similar structures at the same depth nearby. There's a guess that it could be connected to the gold found in the area. They need to pull the core to check if it's a tunnel. Whenever the drill goes down and they find a gap, they hope it will lead them to answers or treasures. It would be a significant moment if they discovered a tunnel close to the shaft. They talk about the depth of the void and find wood at the bottom. They realize they're onto something, as there's wood all through the core. They get a wood sample to check for metals in the lab. Later that day, Rick Lagina and Craig Tester joined others at the Oak Island Interpretive Center for a scientific report. They get XRF results from DN 11.5, confirming it looks like a tunnel and points toward the garden shaft. This area is considered a likely treasure location, making it interesting to see what they find next. In the past 24 hours, the wood sample from borehole DN 11.5 recovered from a believed tunnel 90 feet deep connected to the garden shaft, was dried out and scanned by Emma using an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer. This device uses gamma rays to detect elements or metals in objects. 
Emma explains that they found expected materials like iron, manganese, titanium, calcium, potassium, and aluminum, which are common on Oak Island. However, they also found small quantities of gold, which is remarkable and an outlier. The results from applying this concept to both wood and water are unique and impactful. The gold findings in the water and wood could lead them to the treasure's location. The hope is that it will guide them to exploratory drilling or digging to find the treasure. The team is optimistic and views this as crucial evidence, as significant as the earlier water sampling. They emphasize the importance of continuing the search for more samples to find answers in the lab. Uncovering Aladdin's Cave of Wonders A new day begins on Oak Island for brothers Rick and Marty Lagina and their team, bringing fresh excitement and anticipation. They and underwater imaging expert Blaine Carr are embarking on a two-step operation in the Money Pit area. Their goal is to uncover answers to a 228-year-old treasure mystery. The team plans to enter the cave, previously named Aladdin's Cave, at depths of 140 to 142 feet. They hope to find clues about the nature of the cave, whether it's natural or influenced by people. Their primary targets include tunnels, vaults, and high-density anomalies that could indicate hidden treasure. A week ago, IDN Technologies presented data collected over two years using muon detectors placed at various depths in boreholes across the Money Pit area. The results identified potential targets, suggesting the presence of multiple treasure deposits. The team is drilling a new borehole into Aladdin's cave. They use a high-definition camera to investigate the cave and look for definitive evidence of artificial creation and insights into its contents. As they proceed with the camera, they ensure the lights are on and check if everything is good. The plan is to run the camera down first to visualize the void and potentially identify features useful for 3D mapping sonar. They aim to reach the water and better understand the cave. Rick suggests that photographic imagery from the camera will help them comprehend the cave's nature. They observe the side of the caisson as they go down, reaching the water. They stop to analyze the situation, identifying the edge of the caisson and the cavity beyond it. They request slightly lowering the camera to view the actual cavity better. As they continue exploring Aladdin's cave, the team observes and discusses the features they encounter. Marty notes that as they break into the cavity, they can see the walls and sides of the cave. He suspects there might be something else hidden, possibly covered with silt. To explore further, Steve is asked to slowly lower the camera by three inches to get under a ledge. Rick expresses his observation that it looks open, and Blaine comments that a bigger opening is advantageous for mapping. They find the expansiveness of Aladdin's cave interesting and exciting, with the possibility that the camera might miss something on the cave floor. The team decides to lower the camera further to ensure clarity about the cave's bottom. Steve slowly lowers it about six inches, and they notice something, prompting them to spin the camera for a 360 degrees view. They discuss what they see, noting improved visibility and pointing out something sticking out on the right side of the cave. The team is curious about these features as they continue their exploration. They point out a piece that seems angular and flat, describing it as debris. The team finds this discovery very exciting and considers it important to determine whether it's man-made. There's speculation that it could be a potential location for the treasure, answering many questions. After obtaining video footage of possible man-made workings in Aladdin's cave, the team decides to tie a rope to the debris and scan it with the Echo Logger-710 sonar device. The sonar emits high-intensity radar pulses to create a three-dimensional map of the underwater environment. They discuss the process of obtaining returns and outline the perimeter of the cavity, eagerly waiting to see the final picture. The next morning, the team gathers to see the results of the sonar scan. They are eager to witness what the sonar reveals. The sonar scan shows a view looking straight down into the cave, with yellow-green indicating a slope and darker red representing the wall between the team and the cavern floor. However, the bottom is not visible due to the slope and wall. The sonar suggests potential openings or gaps, indicating man-made ingress into a natural cavern. 
The team speculates about the size of the cavity and the possibility of something being buried there, perhaps the treasure. Rick expresses a pleasant surprise at the potential way into the cave and the prospect of finding man-made features. The team discusses the unique and intriguing nature of the discovery, deciding to move the sonar over and put another hole down to gain a different perspective and explore further. Despite the uncertainty, the team agrees to exploit the opportunity by gathering more data through additional drilling. They express determination to uncover the cave's mysteries and find the potential treasure chamber, an old tunnel in the garden shaft. On a new day at Oak Island, Rick and Marty Lagina and their team are optimistic about solving the 228-year-old treasure mystery. The day starts with Marty greeting Rick, asking about the progress and inquiring about the depth of 23 feet. A team member explains the plan to mark a bit more, conduct blasts and install two more sets, emphasizing ongoing activities at various locations on the island. However, the most promising operation occurs at the Money Pit area, where Dumis Contracting Limited, a mining company, is reconstructing the garden shaft. Marty notices that the material in the shaft is still muddy, and Rick mentions it's backfilled clay, but they were careful while dumping. Recent discoveries boost their optimism, especially regarding the original Money Pit. The 80-foot-deep decayed wooden structure, dated to 1735 through wood samples, is thought to be linked to the money pit. Water testing reveals a high trace of gold and its proximity to a potential void or chamber drilled at 55 feet earlier this year adds to the intrigue. The team is close to uncovering significant clues and valuables in their quest for the island's hidden treasures. Rick explains that signs suggest this might be the original money pit or right next to it, possibly an original attempt. He desires to see what's at the bottom of the shaft and hopes that drilling horizontally and vertically at 50 to 60 feet will reveal a tunnel leading in various directions. After rebuilding the first two sets of the garden shaft, Dumas will construct a new vertical structure with a total depth of around 80 feet. They can also probe outside the shaft and build lateral tunnels during the process for the team to search for treasured evidence. Dumas continues excavating and reconstructing the garden shaft while the team closely monitors the operation using the Anton Spectrum 120 high-definition camera. Marty inquires about the belief in finding treasure at the bottom of the garden shaft. Rick responds that he is hopeful but emphasizes his primary focus on going underground into the money pit to explore opportunities. He expresses eagerness to go down there soon. In preparation for a significant moment in the Money Pit area, Rick Lagina and Oak Island Operations Manager Scott Barlow get ready as the garden shaft reconstruction reaches a depth of 44 feet. Rick is on the verge of experiencing his first opportunity to go underground in the Money Pit area. After reaching the 44-foot depth and completing the required safety training, a team member announces that Rick is about to have his first opportunity to go underground in the Money Pit area personally. As they descend, Rick reflects on the intense emotions running through them, emphasizing the significance of shared experiences in life. He believes their exploration is part of a wonderful story, carrying on the legacy of those who came before them. Descending further, the team marvels at the well-preserved history below the surface. Rick acknowledges the challenges faced by people in the past who lacked modern tools like cranes, emphasizing their will, desire, and belief that where there's a will, there's a way. Rick comments on anticipating answers about what happened in this area, expressing his intrigue. Standing near the 50-foot mark, Rick and Marty express gratitude for the unique opportunity. When all hope has been lost and the Lagina brothers will never find the Oak Island treasures, they come across the underwater cave and see clear signs that the Aladdin cave was man-made. What do these discoveries mean? How close are the Lagina brothers to discovering the Oak Island treasure?